Start ArcGIS Pro and sign in with an ArcGIS online subscription account. Choose the Open Another Project link. Click Computer and then Browse. Navigate to the C drive and then to the GIS class folder wherever you placed it. It contains two folders, a class projects folder for storing projects related to this book and the MGIS data folder containing additional GIS data. Navigate into the class projects folder and then into the Crater Lake project folder. Click the project file craterlake.aprx to highlight it. Click OK. Click the lake checkbox to turn off the lake layer. The rock units of the floor of the caldera are revealed. Below the lake layer, examine the crater lake geology entry, known as a group layer. Uncheck the box next to it to turn all the layers in the group off. Turn on the hillshade layer, a raster that shows the terrain. Turn on the Crater Lake Geology group layer again. The rock types layer is slightly transparent so that the terrain beneath it can be seen. Turn the lake layer back on. In the contents pane, hover over the first icon until its name appears, list by drawing order. This is the default view of the pane. Click on the list by data source icon, the second one, which shows the source of the data used in the map, e.g. the location of the data file. Most of the data comes from the GIS class folder, but the topographic layer is an internet-based GIS service. Click through each of the remaining icons to examine the different panels. When finished, return to the List by Drawing Order panel, the first one, which can change the order of the drawing layers. Layers are drawn in order from bottom to top. Click and drag the lake layer above the vents layer. Notice that the vents in the lake disappear because they are covered by the lake polygon when drawn in this order. Move the lake layer back between the faults and the Crater Lake Geology layers. Click the Map Ribbon title and examine its groups, Clipboard, Navigate, Layer, etc. Click each of the main ribbon titles in turn and examine the groups and buttons. In the Contents pane, click to highlight the Crater Lake map title. Examine the ribbon titles. In the Contents pane, click on the Vents layer name to highlight it. Notice that a new ribbon group appears, Feature Layer, with three additional ribbons, Appearance, Labeling, and Data. Click on each of the three Feature Layer subribbons and examine the groups and the buttons. In the Contents pane, click the Lake Layer to highlight it. Click the Feature Layer Appearance ribbon and find the Effects group. Set the Transparency slider to about 50%, revealing the rock units underneath. Click the Rock Types layer and click Swipe in the Effects group. Place the cursor on an edge of the map then click and drag toward the center to reveal the hillshade layer. Click on the Effects Swipe tool again, but notice that it does not turn off. Click on the Map Ribbon title and examine the Navigate group. Notice that the Swipe tool is still enabled even after switching ribbons. Hover over the Explore button. A button tip appears explaining how to use the mouse to navigate the map. 
All buttons have pop-up explanations. Click the Explore button and hover over the map. The swipe triangle is replaced by a hand icon for panning the map. Use the Explore button instructions to learn how to pan and zoom. Then hold the mouse over the other buttons in the navigation group to read about what they do. Experiment and practice with them to understand how each works. Hover over the small box arrow icon on the lower right corner of the Navigate group until it shows the pop-up text Navigation Options. Click the Navigation Options icon. The Options window opens. The left side of the Options window lists groups of settings. The navigation options are already selected. Click on the other sections to explore them, but then return to the navigation section. Rolling the mouse wheel forward may be assigned to zoom in or zoom out, depending on the user preference. Change the setting now if desired. Click OK to accept the change. Click on one of the geologic units in the map not in the lake. The polygon flashes and a pop-up window appears with information about the polygon. Click on one of the geologic units in the lake. The pop-up shows information about the lake instead because it is the top layer. Click the little black arrow near the bottom of the Explore button and examine the menu choices. They control which layers will appear in the pop-up. Set the Explore button option Selected in Contents. In the Contents pane, click the Crater Floor Geology layer to select it, and then click one of the geologic units in the lake in the map. Now the pop-up shows the Crater Floor Geology. Click on the Full Extent button to go to the extent of all the layers in the map. Unfortunately, the topographic base map layer has a very large extent or map area. The default full extent can be changed using the map's properties. In the Contents pane, right-click the icon by the Crater Lake map title and choose Properties. On the left side, click on Extent to see those properties. Fill the button for Custom Extent. Click the Calculate From drop-down underneath it and set it to the Crater Lake Geology layer. Click OK. Click the Full Extent button again and it will zoom to Crater Lake. Click Map Navigate Bookmarks Crater Lake. Zoom to the island on the west side of the lake. Choose Bookmarks, New Bookmark. Enter the name Wizard Island. Click OK. Click the Bookmarks drop-down and select the Crater Lake Bookmark to return to the view of the lake. The final navigation tool, Zoom to Selection, is dim because something must be selected before one can zoom to it. Click Map, Selection, Select, just the button, not the drop-down triangle. Click on Wizard Island. The polygon clicked is highlighted in blue, indicating that it is selected. Click the Zoom to Selection button in the Navigate group. Zoom to the previous extent. Multiple features may be selected by drawing a box around them. Click the Select button in the Selection group. Click and drag a box around several geologic units. Features that pass partially inside the box will be selected. Click the Clear button in the Selection group to clear the selection. Choose Map, Inquiry, Measure, Measure Distance. Examine the instructions in the window that opens, then measure across the lake. 
Click the Options drop-down and select Distance Units, Miles. Explore this tool and the other tools in the Measure drop-down until you can measure distances, areas, and features in a variety of units.